Hello everyone, Alfred Cromwell here. First, a couple of announcements, or actually one announcement, I think. Uh, later on, I will be updating the blog on the uh, citytutoringmath.com website. Uh, it's really a call to action, uh, to both social action, educational action, and political action as well. Uh, but my message is not just for um, young people in America, it's also for young people in the West, uh, in general, and even people who are not Westerners, but who share uh, at least the broad values that we share. It's very important that we are committed, uh, especially in these times, that we are committed to the consolidation of certain universal principles. I think what we have lost in the past, let's say, 20, 25 years, ironically with globalization, is that we have lost the idea that the idea of true universal values. And we have substituted, we, we talk a lot these days about the global village, but in the end, what we have is fragmentation. Even in America today, the way that uh, our country is set up, uh, it's really balkanized. We have entire communities that are parallel to each other. And this has been the result of decades in the making of schools teaching people that values, for example, are relative, that all beliefs are uh, equally valid and they're not uh, that for example you cannot uh, if you have a group of people let's say who believed that uh, child sacrifice is a great thing no i am sorry that is not acceptable and that is certainly not equal to the christian values and so i am unapologetically a christian i am unapologetically a westerner and of course i am here to defend uh, both pure mathematics and truth so uh, my uh, the the, po the article later on that you I will post another video later on today with uh, that information where you can read it those of you who like to participate because I find uh, it's much more productive to have a discussion on a blog than it is on a YouTube comments section because things get lost sometimes uh, in you uh, on YouTube. Uh, the other thing is that this particular video is going to be solving the last problem that I showed you in my last video, which uh, I've gotten. I, I think I had two people try to solve it and you didn't really solve it correctly. And then I had a lot of emails actually of people sending me answers, but none of them are correct so far. So I'm going to show you the problem again. I want you to try if you didn't see the, the last video, you didn't watch it. You can see it now. Maybe some people watching this video will be able to solve it and then we'll solve it. Uh, I don't think uh, it's, it's not too hard. It's from my book, my upcoming book. Uh, and so some, but some people find it hard. Another thing that I will be uh, probably mentioning in my next video is I had a really nice uh, productive session yesterday with one of my tutoring students. He was wowed because he finally discovered, uh, I, that my objective was for him to discover it on his own, uh, a proof, uh, seeing the big picture of the factor theorem. We were dealing with polynomials and of course, he said, you know, at first he was a little bit frustrated. You know, he said, I've never seen something like this. Um, I don't think I could do this. Uh, and I said, young man, go back to the paper, sit yourself down, and I want you to try it until, you know, until you feel hopeless. And that's what we did. And uh, towards the end of the session, he said, you know what? I'm always frustrated and uh, I know the problems are hard, but uh, I I'm starting to see the big picture. I'm starting to really realize that it's all worth it. Um, and then I asked him, I said, um, why don't you bring this to your classmates in school? He says, oh, no, I can't do that. And I said, why not? I was a little bit surprised. He said the teacher wouldn't like it. And I said, why would the teacher not want that? He said, oh, because this is too, um, he's, he, according to him, that that would be too advanced for his honors, get this, honors Algebra 2 class. And these are polynomials. Um, and so this is the state of America, ladies and gentlemen. We have even teachers who discourage students to do things properly. But anyway, uh, you already know that. So uh, let me get into the, the problem that I showed you uh, last time. This was the problem that was posted that I showed you in the last problem that I showed you uh, in the previous video. And I didn't solve it in the previous video because I, I left it up to you. So if you had not seen it or you want to try and solve it now before I share the solution, uh, you can try that now. You can pause the video and then we'll talk about it. Sine of X plus one over the square root of three cosine of X times cosine of X equals one over the square root of three. If you know a little bit about manipulating certain things, uh, it should not be too hard. It shouldn't be hard at all. 
But of course, um, depending on where you go to school in the US, uh, you might not have been exposed to problems like this. It all depends where you go to school. We've already talked about that. We've said that in the US, depending on your school district, things are wildly different. If you're European, by the way, or from another country in general watching this video, I keep emphasizing this. Uh, America is a big country. So th there's no one way to describe uh, our educational system, um, except to say that for the most part, no matter what state you look at, uh, it's been a complete failure. But what I'm saying is that the level of difficulty or rigor really does vary across the country. Um, you know, a lot of people, when you, you have this idea that uh, the U.S. is like in the films you watch, and in some to some extent, that is true, but not necessarily. Every state is very different. And even within the states, I live in Virginia, and Virginia is very different depending on where you live. Virginia Beach is completely different to Lynchburg, and Lynchburg is completely different to uh, even uh, nearby Charlottesville. That's like another planet altogether. Uh, and then you have uh, the Nova area, right? Northern Virginia, which is basically just filled with transplants for the most part um, and lost its Southern character uh, long ago. So, um, so did Charlottesville, by the way. But anyway, let's see if you could solve this. All right, now, you have to remember from this, some of you might know this, one over the square root of three is the same as the tangent of 30 degrees. If you know that, then you can use substitution into the equation. We have the sine of x plus the sine of 30 degrees divided by the cosine of 30 degrees. Why? Because remember the tangent of theta, you have an identity. Tangent of theta is equal to the sine of theta over the cosine of theta. So you have here a, a different way of writing it. Uh, and then, so that's times cosine x equals 1 over the square root of 3. If you didn't get up to this point, see if you can then work out the solution uh, for, uh, breaking from st with this uh, starting point as your reference. All right, so from there, we have a fraction, sine of 30 over the cosine of 30 in degrees. We can multiply both sides of the equation by the denominator cosine of 30 degrees. And if we do that, we have sine of x times the cosine of 30 degrees plus the sine of 30 degrees times the cosine of x equals 1 over the square root of 3 times the cosine of 30 degrees. And now I hope that you can recognize the identity because the left-hand side is a uh, the sine of a sum, what we call the sine of a sum identity which is the sine of a times the cosine of b plus the cosine of a times the sine of b is equal to the sine of, uh, usually written as sine parentheses, a plus b. So that's what we're going to do next. And here is the final solution, no pun intended. Have a look at it and see if it matches more or less with what you have. I like to put it, put it as with the 360, as I told you why in my previous video. But hopefully this helps. Anyway, if you are, if this was helpful, as I always say, please continue to help the channel grow. I very much appreciate all my subscribers. I don't deserve any of them, to be honest. Um, I never would have thought, you know, just a few, just a year ago, that this would have happened. Um, before I started with YouTube, I used to spend a lot of my time just writing personally on my, you know, at my desk and just uh, reading and taking walks. Now I feel I have a, another job in a way, but uh, it's all good because God is always a blessing, is always blessing me with jobs to do. Uh, that's all I've ever known in my life, work. I have never known anything else. Uh, ever since I was 16, I've been working in different capacities, but it's something I enjoy the work I do and I feel very blessed by God. And I believe that if more people uh, toned down their personal expectations in terms of uh, materialism, uh, the accumulation of just uh, material goods, uh, and instead spend their time pursuing more of a social and intellectual activities, uh, we'd have a far better society and a far better country. Thank you all.